In today's video, we're going to talk about the last stand of Saddam Hussein's sons, Qusay and Uday Hussein, the background of their assassination, as well as the relationship with their father. So, without further delay, let's get to the topic. Who were Qusay and Uday Hussein? Qusay and Uday Hussein, the sons of Iraq's deposed president, were infamous for their brutality, surpassing even that of their notorious father. Celebrations erupted among many Iraqis on their demise. Aged 39 and 37 respectively, Uday, the eldest son and presumed heir, and his younger brother Qusay, had amassed considerable wealth through illicit oil smuggling. Uday's extravagant lifestyle and lack of discipline irked even the seemingly amoral Saddam. In 1988, after Uday brutally attacked and assassinated one of Saddam's favored attendants, he faced brief imprisonment and beatings. Despite Saddam's partiality towards Qusay, Uday continued his sadistic and cruel behavior. Infamous for torturing servants and exploring new torture methods, Uday mistreated even his so-called friends. Reports indicate he forced some to consume dangerous amounts of alcohol for his amusement. Uday's unrestrained sexual exploits further tarnished his image, with threats to victims and their families to prevent them from speaking out. Uday held various positions during his father's regime, overseeing the country's most widely read newspaper, leading Iraq's Olympic Committee with beatings for underperforming athletes, and heading the Fedayeen Saddam, one of his father's security groups. At the same time, Qusay gained Saddam's confidence. Married with four children, he was considered less sadistic than Uday, but still a feared and ruthless assassin. Unlike Uday, who boasted about his violent actions, Qusay deliberately maintained a lower profile. He deeply respected his father, working hard to impress him. However, Qusay somehow managed to earn Saddam's favor, especially by brutally suppressing Shiite uprisings following the 1991 Gulf War, even personally participating in assassinations. In recognition of his loyalty, Saddam appointed Qusay to key roles, including command of the Republican Guard, Iraq's elite fighting force, and the Special Security Organization, the country's secret police. At this point, it was evident that Qusay had replaced his brother as Saddam's probable successor. Mysterious assault attempt on Uday Hussein. Uday became the target of a shooting one day while driving. Evidently, Uday wasn't alone in the car, but it remains a mystery who he was accompanied by that day and where he was going. More importantly, to this day, nobody knows who carried out the shooting, although various theories exist. The most popular theory, although never conclusively proven, speculates that his brother Qusay might have been involved in the assassination attempt, or at least ordered and planned it. The incident resulted in a stroke for Uday, and despite surgery, a bullet remained lodged in his spine. While he regained most functions, Uday lived with significant pain for the rest of his life, possibly intensifying his cruel tendencies. The weakness resulting from the shooting might also have fueled his father's increasing doubts about his suitability as a successor. It seemed this event was probably the turning point, and the moment Saddam realized that Qusay was the ideal son to succeed him. However, many sources claimed that Uday had more leadership characteristics compared to his brother. Background of their assassination Despite Qusay's esteemed reputation, Observers find it intriguing that Uday's Fedayeen Saddam outperformed Qusay's Republican Guard during the 2003 U.S. invasion of Iraq. Qusay proved to be an ineffective leader, displaying fear and frequently questioning his decisions. In March and April 2003, a U.S.-led military coalition invaded Iraq, toppling Saddam Hussein's Ba'athist government. Following the defeat of the Iraqi army, Saddam and his sons went into hiding, becoming wanted fugitives. Uday, the founder and commander of the Fedayeen Saddam, a loyalist paramilitary organization serving as Saddam's personal guard, outperformed Qusay's leadership during the invasion. Both became high-priority targets, featuring on the coalition's most wanted Iraqi playing cards, with Qusay as the ace of hearts and Uday as the ace of clubs. Saddam held the position of the Ace of Spades. Coalition authorities posted a prize of a combined $30 million reward for the brothers' capture. 
Despite widespread speculation that they wouldn't be found together due to their antagonism towards each other, an informant's tip led U.S. Special Forces to a house where both Uday and Kuse were staying on July 22, 2003, gaining intel and the first step of the operation. On the night of Monday, 21st July 2003, Nawaf Al Zaidan, a businessman and close friend of Saddam's family, who falsely claimed to be cousins with Saddam's family, sheltered Uday Kuse, Kuse's 14-year-old son Mustafa, and their bodyguard Abdul Samad in his mansion in the Fala neighborhood of northeastern Mosul for about three weeks. He later went to a nearby U.S. Coalition 101st Airborne base on the following day, turning in the two sons due to the combined $30 million reward. Despite evident nervousness, Al Zaidan confidently provided exact locations, detailed descriptions, and habits of Kusay and Uday. He even passed a lie detector test. Subsequently, a decision was made to send a detachment of U.S. Special Forces troops to apprehend the brothers. Around 10 a.m. on Tuesday 22, 2003, eight Special Forces soldiers from Task Force 121, along with 40 infantrymen from the 101st Airborne Division, surrounded the safe house. Despite using a bullhorn to order the occupants to surrender, there was no response. A team of eight U.S. Special Forces operatives knocked on the door at 10.10 10 a.m. Receiving no answer, they breached the door, encountering heavy gunfire from the occupants armed with AK-47s and barricaded on the second floor. In the ensuing battle, three Special Forces soldiers were wounded inside the house and a fourth was wounded as the team withdrew. The brothers were determined to offer resistance at all costs. End of the operation, the last stand of the two brothers. Following the retreat, soldiers from the 101st Airborne and three 327th Infantry surrounded the safe house, engaging in an intense firefight using grenade launchers, rockets and machine guns mounted on Humvees. By 11.22 a.m., over 200 reinforcement soldiers had arrived to assist the task force. At 11.45 a.m., Kiowa OH-58D Army helicopters arrived, firing at the safe house and destroying a significant portion with machine gun rounds and rockets. Despite this assault, heavy gunfire and grenade attacks persisted. The task force considered using Apache helicopters to destroy the safe house, but ruled it out due to concerns over potential civilian casualties. At 1 p.m., three hours into the operation, 10 tow missiles were fired at the house from Humvee-mounted launchers, resulting in a massive explosion that reduced much of the safe house to rubble. By 1.21 p.m., several American soldiers entered the ruined house and found Uday and Kuse lifeless. As the team advanced upstairs, it encountered Kuse's son. Unfortunately, Kuse's 14-year-old son, Mustafa, was taking cover in a bedroom and opened fire with an AK-47 but was instantly killed in return fire. What happened after the operation? After the raid, all four occupants' bodies were taken from the house and flown to Baghdad for identification tests. Morticians reconstructed the bodies of Kuse and Uday Hussein, identified through DNA testing and dental records. Both had significantly altered their appearances to avoid detection. Uday shaved his head entirely and Kuse trimmed his signature beard. The Department of Defense later published photos of the brothers' corpses, stirring considerable controversy when shown on TV and in the newspapers. Because of that, the Department of Defense was heavily criticized. However, officials thought it was necessary to convince skeptical Iraqis that the two notorious brothers were really gone for good. However, they didn't stop there. There was more to it. Around five months later, on December 13, 2003, Saddam, who had also gone into hiding following the U.S. invasion, was discovered and captured alive by American forces. His trial by a special tribunal for numerous crimes committed during his rule commenced in October 2005. On November 5, 2006, he was found guilty of crimes against humanity and sentenced to death by hanging. He filed an appeal, but it was unsuccessful, leading to his execution on December 30th, 2006. 
U.S. officials declared that the informant who tipped off coalition authorities would receive the combined $30 million reward for Kusay and Uday Hussein. Saddam remembered his two sons as martyrs, expressing that if he'd had a hundred sons, he would have offered them on the same path, which is the path of jihad. Uday Kusay and Kusay's son Mustafa were laid to rest alongside each other in a cemetery in Tikrit. The whereabouts of Kusay's other two sons, Yahya and Yakub, remain unknown, even though some sources suggest the two of them might be alive. That's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like and comment on this video. Also, don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you like what we're doing and want us to continue with more cool content. Until the next time.